Hello my friends, my name is Gene Arnold from Regular Guy Mountain Biking and thanks so much for tuning into this episode. What I'll be talking about this time around will be all the upgrades that I added to my Polygon Siskiyou D6. Now if you're interested in the D6 and want to learn more about the bike in general, check out my review of the D6. I've got a link to it right above my head someplace around here. Okay, so let's get into the different areas that I upgraded and changed on this bike. Let's start from the top. The first thing we're gonna talk about will be the, the cockpit. I did change the grips. The stock grips are more those rubber type of grips that generally kind of start moving around after some time. Um, I like lock grips. Specifically, I like the Lizard Skin North Shore grips. I like those grips because of the feel. I do have a tendon in here that seems to hurt after a while when I ride with uh, smaller diameter grips. The North Shore grips have a wider or larger diameter. Just feels good on my hands. That's the kind of grip that I like to use. So the North Shores have been moving to more and more of the bikes that I like to ride. Also, before I go any further, I'll have links to all these parts in a kit right down below. So you can look at everything and click and see if you want to get any of these products. They'll all be in one nice kit organized for you to check out. Now those grips are attached to a set of Pacific Northwest handlebars, and those handlebars are attached to the bike with a Pacific Northwest range 50 millimeter stem. I like that combination. I really like the bars. I like the, the sweep, the rise, the angles. The bars just work for me. I think they're, they're, they're kind of classy looking. You can get them in different colors. So I'm sticking with them. So you'll see more and more, more of my bikes having those bars and the same thing with the stem. It's just a nice solid stem. I like the attachment in the front, the feature in front where you can put, it's a GoPro mount where you can put a GoPro or what I usually do is I use it to mount my, my night light when I'm riding. So it's just a great combo. So I like the Pacific Northwest uh, range bars and the Pacific Northwest range stem. To, to finish up the dressing up in the cockpit, I did take out the stock dropper seat post lever. Normally, I would put on a Pacific Northwest loam lever or a wolf tooth remote, uh, remote lever. Those are two of the best levers that I've ever worked with. I actually have a video on different uh, dropper seat post levers that you can check out if you'd like to learn more. Those are the ones I like, but I did happen to have a decent Trans-X lever that was in stock because of another system that I had come in. And I put that on this bike and it's doing a good job. But regardless, the lever that came on the bike, not so good. And I wanted to get that switched out. So to finish off a few more of the, the more personal taste, easier upgrades that I did to the bike, I did put a Fidlock water bottle on this bike. This particular bike is, it's pretty tight for the size of water bottle that you can fit in here because of the way that the uh, shock is set up. So there's not a lot of room. In fact, I've, I've got a couple water bottles here. You're, you're not gonna even fit one of these larger, uh, larger water bottles on here. There's just, there's just not enough room. Um, I mean, it's, it's not gonna happen. So you might be able to get one of the smaller ones in, but the reason why I really, in fact, you, you probably could, it'd be, it'd be tight. But the reason why I really liked the, uh, the fid lock is because it just twists right out. And the fact that you have such a little bit amount of, amount of room, I know you can get a slide in water bottle cage, but even with that, it's, it's still gonna be a bit of a pain when you can just go, you just go like that. I've got a full review on the whole Fidlock system. Again, these have been working more and more towards the rest of my bikes. I, I like the system, but I really like the system for this bike because of the limited amount of space you have for a water bottle. Next, I did put a very basic frame protection uh, like tape on, on this bike. There's a company called Groundkeeper and they make more of a stock um, design, okay? It's a, like like kind of like the helicopter tape type of stuff. And they make this kit that you can use on, it's universal for all bikes. And I did put it on the bike. It gives you uh, protection here, here, and all back there. The only problem I had, and has nothing to do with the Groundkeeper product, is that the frame up here and right here, the frame has this little texture, these little little diamonds that look cool, but when you try to put a film, a tape on top of it, 
it's a little, you really have to work the bubbles out. That has nothing to do with the Groundkeeper product. Groundkeeper product was fine. In fact, it's really nice how it fits on like that. Definitely recommend it. They also have some different designs if you want to kind of like tape up your bike and make it look different, you know, go with that. But the fact that the frame has these little, little diamond things, it made it tough to put any kind of protection on it. And lastly, oh, big surprise, I've got another set of catalyst pedals on this bike. I'm not gonna lie to you, I've probably got 10 pairs of these pedals. I've got them on uh, all six of my bikes, six or seven bikes, <laughs> and I have extra pairs that I take with me when people wanna try them out. I'm just a fan, okay? I think it's important to find products that you like and stick with them, and well, there they are. So uh, Catalyst pedals found their way to this bike as well. So that was pretty simple. Like I said, those are more personal taste type of things. You will probably have products that you like to use uh, better than other products, and I would expect that you'd put them on, on your bike as well. But um, please understand, before I get into this next section, I wanna make it clear that this bike out of the box rides pretty sweet. You'll learn more about that if you watch my first product review of the bike. There are certain areas that I definitely think you're gonna wanna upgrade, and I'll talk about that right now. But the things I covered just before, um, they're more personal taste things. I mean, it's, 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 <laughs> it's a water bottle. You're gonna put one on, right? It's not the bike's fault it didn't come with a water bottle. So I just wanna make sure I put things in the right place. Okay, so now let's get into the, the, the nitty gritty over here. That's gonna be things around the suspension and the wheels and what I did, because now we're kind of kicking things up a little bit. First things first, let's take the easiest of all those. I did put a SR Suntour Edge shock on this bike. Full disclosure, I've got a very good relationship right now with SR Suntour. They're a big supporter of this channel. They make very good products and I, I love using their products, okay? I wanna be very clear. This shock is on here more because I want to support them. I do feel it's a better quality shock than came on the bike. Um, I also like the fact that this shock allows me to put a volume spacer inside of it, which has helped me tune the bike in a little bit. But I don't really wanna knock the shock that came on the bike. I didn't change it because the shock on the bike was bad. This one just is better, okay? And gives me a little bit more room for adjustability. Now with that being said, let's move to the fork on this bike. All right. That I gotta tell you, that's not so good, all right? The fork that comes on this bike out of the box, it, it's not that great. It's, a, it's an entry level fork. Uh, a lot of us have talked to uh, Bikes Online slash Polygon about this. Bikes Online is the company that I've been getting these bikes from and Bikes Online sells Polygon bikes. So they're, they're very close with uh, Polygon, right? They work together tightly. So we, we did let them know that on such a nice bike, because it really is such a nice bike, the fork just doesn't match the quality of the rest of the bike. So the fork had to come out. It just, why did it have to come out? The adjustments really weren't great. Um, it just didn't have the, the small bump compliance. It just, and it was just bouncy. It just didn't feel good. And the rest of the bike is so nice. You, you, you're kind of like, you know, going to town and beating the hell out of the bike. The fork just couldn't keep up with how good everything else was. So what did I do? I did switch out the fork. I've got an SR Suntour Axon fork on here, okay? Great fork. I have 140 millimeters of travel with this fork, but it came at a price, and I literally mean a price. Let, let me explain why this was a tricky upgrade. Unfortunately, the fork and the front wheel on this bike is not boost, okay? Since the fork and the wheel is not boost, when you want to upgrade the fork, it gets a little bit, it gets a little bit tricky. If you want to upgrade the fork on this bike, these are your possible solutions. You can, one, buy the T, uh, rather the D7, rather than the D6, which comes with an upgraded fork, but it's also still not boost um, and that's kind of the standard now. And I'll probably do a video at some point on the differences between the D6 and the D7 and why you'd wanna buy one or the other. But regardless, if you don't like this fork, you can get the D7, which has a better fork than this one. Your other option is to buy a non-boost fork. And if all you wanna do is just get a better fork on this bike, 
you're really not looking to go crazy. You just realize that the fork that came with it is just, just not going to cut it and you want something a little bit better, then sure, just go with a non-boost fork. Remember, boost, boost is the width, okay, the width of this part right down here of the bike. It's, it's the width of the wheel. Non-boost is 100 millimeters, and I think boost is 110 millimeters, and if I'm wrong, I'm going to put a little thing over my head. I think I'm right. Anyway, the, the boost gives the, um, the wheel, okay, uh, and the, the fork just, just more support to handle uh, different lateral hits and, and things like that. You can learn all about boost on, on YouTube, but the fact is, it's not boost, okay? So you can choose to go non-boost and just stick with a non-boost fork with the original non-boost wheel and call it a day. Nothing's wrong with that. I, of course, cannot just keep it non-boost and have to have boost because I like to have boost and boost is a fun word to say and it, it's boost, boost, I want to say boost. So I wanted to go boost. So that's where the ching ching came in because the problem is the stock wheels that come with this bike use the Shimano center lock uh, rotors, okay? Uh, a common, they're, they're, there are two common ways to attach the rotor to the wheel. You're either using six bolt, which would have come in really handy here, or the, the Shimano center lock, you, you attach it that way. The two that I know of, there, there could be more, but it, regardless, it doesn't make a difference. It's what came on this bike. If it was a six bolt, okay, if it was a six bolt pattern, I could have kept the regular wheels, okay, and I could have spent maybe, I think it's a 10 or $11 piece and it's a small adapter that pushes the rotor out and makes up for the spacing difference. And then I would have just lived with the fact that the fork is boost, the wheels are not boost. Yes, I would not have gained the benefit of boost wheels, but I could have postponed the cost of upgrading everything for a little while and actually got some use out of the stock wheels because the stock wheels, I only used them a little bit and then I put them in the garage, okay? So if I didn't have that center lock uh, rotor, I could have spent $11 and not bought new wheels. Okay, but there is a center lock on there and I couldn't use the adapter. So now I have these options. I can take the front wheel, give it to a bike shop and have them upgrade the wheel to boost, which would mean they would have to, I would have to buy a new, a new, um, a new, a new hub, a, a boost hub, and they'd have to relace the wheel. These are not high-end wheels, and to be quite honest, that would be a bit of an expensive avenue to go down, and the end result really wouldn't have been that much better than the wheel I had in the first place. Another option would be to just buy one front wheel, and it would obviously not match the rear wheel, okay, and, and you know, this would be a different wheel. And I gotta be honest, you buy a new bike, you know, it's feeling, you don't want it to look like a Frankenstein bike. It's a good looking bike. You want the bike to look good. I don't blame you. I, that's, that's what I want it to look good. So I wasn't going to go that route either. So really the only thing left for me to do because of what I wanted is to go with new, new wheels, okay? That allowed me to get a high quality boost fork on the bike, okay? Uh, all the trimmings, the, bore, the, the fork was great. Remember, I was going, I wanted to upgrade the fork anyway. And I was able to get a nice set. Uh, they were still low cost wheels. I've got, um, I've got a video about these wheels. They're the, the Bontrager Line Comp 30 wheels. You can, you can learn about them there. And it's, it's, it's working great. This took care of my front suspension situation. All right, so that's going to kind of cover the suspension. But I need to talk about the tires on this bike. So if you don't upgrade the fork, let's say you, you don't, all right? You, you, the fork's cool, you don't upgrade the fork. The rims that come, the stock rims, are tubeless, but I wouldn't say tubeless ready. Tubeless ready would mean to me that they're at least taped to use in a tubeless situation. Uh, they're not taped. So I would say a tubeless ready wheel is one that is literally taped and ready for tubeless. It also, the kit, the bike doesn't come with tubeless stems, okay? So if you wanna upgrade this bike to tubeless and you don't wanna change the fork, which I recommend doing, you're still gonna have to go and get the rims taped, not the biggest deal in the world, buy tubeless stems, eh, not that big a deal. But here's the kicker. The tires that come on this bike that are stock are not tubeless ready. That kind of stinks. So I literally rode the bike for a little while 
and toss the tires in the garbage because I wanted to take off that rotational weight and go tubeless so I wouldn't have pinch flats. I live in rock, rock mania over here. All we do is ride on rocks. I wasn't gonna risk getting a pinch flat. So that was kind of a bummer. The tires went right away. I tossed them because I wanted to go tubeless. So since the tires were getting upgraded one way or the other, let me tell you what I put on this bike and these wheels. I'm running the Crown Gem, the Crown Gem tires from V, uh, V tires. They're doing great. I like them. I've got them on multiple bikes. They're rocking it. And that's what I have on, on these wheels. So that's going to do it for the upgrades that I've done on my Polygon Siskiyou D6. And honestly, I really don't think I'll upgrade too much more. The drivetrain is fine. Okay, I, I do miss having the the big old bailout uh, 5052, you know, tooth, you know, big pizza ring back there. But what stock is is not bad. The bike is shifting fine. Uh, look. It's, it's a great bike. I don't have any complaints. Everyone always upgrades their mountain bike. And these are the upgrades I did to, to this bike. There will be more videos around these bikes. I would like to do eventually a long-term review on the bike. I'm also going to do probably a D6 versus, versus D7. And I'll probably also be doing a D6 versus T7. And the reason why I'm doing that video is because right on the, on the other side of this wall... I've got a box that I haven't opened yet with a Polygon T7 sitting in there waiting for me to put together. So why not do a comparison between the two bikes? So lots more Polygon bike videos coming out. Seems to be a popular brand. You folks like them. So I'll, I'll keep reporting on them. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions or you have, maybe if you've done other upgrades to these bikes that you think other people would like, put them in the comments down below, uh, questions down below, just put everything in below, okay? And um, thanks for watching the video. Gene from Regular Guy Mountain Biking. Keep the party on the pedals, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.